So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do that. Uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mrs. Atom. And this is Mr. Atom. Welcome back to another episode of By the By. Hey, y'all. Yeah. (laughs) We've got a fun one tonight, or at least fun for us, because we get to relive a couple of really awesome nights at our secret spot. Yes. And an awesome night that was had at our own spot. Okay, we're going to go there tonight. We All could. Right. We yeah. could. Let's see. Um, we'll see how time goes. We'll, we'll yeah. see how much awake I can stay since <laughs> this weekend has been, I mean, an amazeballs weekend, but woof. Yeah, we may have had a, I'm going to say, two to three hour nap this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're ready to go. That's right. Oh, uh, I have seen more 3 a.m.s in my 30s, in my late 30s, than I think mm-hmm. I ever saw in college. Yeah. <laughs> kind of awesome. But they're fun 3 a.m.s. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> very much. <laughs> Not going to argue that. All right, where are we starting? Uh, let's start back a couple weeks ago. We went to our secret spot. They have one of their theme nights that they now have, thanks to C&D at Swinging Down Under, is the Sexy in His Shirt night. And it was our first Sexy in His Shirt night. It was. We, we had not we been hadn't, to that one before. Yeah, it just hadn't... I mean, it wasn't that we didn't try to go. It was just that every time they had one, we were doing something else. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, and so it was funny because... Well, I think it was funny. That we went with the intention that once we got there, I would, you know, of course, take off my clothes and put on Mr. Adams' shirt. So then I would truly be sexy in his shirt. <laughs> However, we got there and we're putting all of our things in the locker and Mr. Adam was like, I don't want to give you my shirt. I still want to keep my shirt on because admittedly when we walked through, we walked in the front door, came through the club and there was a fairly large group of people sitting in that front lounge room playing Naughty Jenga. And we'll touch on that momentarily. <laughs> But as we walked through, everybody was quite clothed. And so when we got to the locker room and put our things away, Mr. Adam didn't want to take his shirt off because he felt, you know, he'd be the only one out there that was shirtless. And so then I borrowed one of the shirts that OSS has hanging up for Sexy and His Shirt Night. And so I ended up with that instead. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. (laughs) I was like, what do you mean you're not going to give me your shirt? <laughs> I'm not I thought you were going to give me your shirt. <laughs> like, I, I thought I was as well. <laughs> <laughs> so now we know next time to bring a spare. Or just, or use just the borrow ones the that, one there. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do have a bunch hanging up. So if you don't you know, bring your own guy's shirt, you can borrow one. That's right. So, yeah. Um, but it was interesting to get there. And a lot of the ladies were wearing white shirts uh-huh. and a lot of guys were fully dressed and a lot of ladies were wearing just white shirts and, yeah. and underwear, um, which is just sort of, it, it's an interesting the disparity. Yeah. It's an two. interesting disparity. Um, yeah. at, at some point, uh, I think that OSS should do a, um, uh, CFNM, uh, party. I'm getting the look. I, I don't. I, the only thing I know for CF is clusterfuck, and I don't know what the <laughs> NM would be. <laughs> uh, no, it's a genre of porn that stands for clothed female naked male. Oh, okay, that makes um, sense. So in the porn, I mean, in most of the porns, it's just the men are serving the women in some for, form or fashion while they're sitting around talking, oh, and they're fully clothed. Well, that sounds awesome. And the guys are naked. Um, it's just kind of interesting. <laughs> like, take that patriarchy. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> that doesn't sound terrible to me. Um, <laughs> No, but it was interesting. So we uh, also to say, I, I, and I love uh, this, we we walked in and, and the lady who greeted us at the door knows us very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we're walking through, she's like, the couple you were hoping is here is here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which was funny. Yeah. Um, and we're like, awesome. Because we were meeting, we were going to meet some friends. We knew mm-hmm. they were going to be there. Uh, and 
and we may have been talking about them a lot. And so uh, she's like, they're here. <laughs> uh, so we went and got changed and then came back in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was one of those, gosh, the front room was packed. Yeah, there were, I'm trying to picture I would now, have said at least eight or nine one, couples. Two, three, four, five, six. We were probably the eighth one at that point, yeah. I would say. And so, yeah, there were a lot of couples sitting kind of in a circle, mostly in a circle, playing Naughty Jenga. And Naughty Jenga is not actually a real thing. It's a It Jenga. is a totally real thing. It is, but it's <laughs> it not should be. it's not something you can go buy at the store. No, but I think you can find it online now. Okay. Because yeah, what they did was um, at, at our secret spot they wrote on the back of the pieces so that when you pull a piece out of the tower you turn it over and you have to do what it says. So it may be kiss two people to your left. It may be remove an item of clothing. Sexy dance. Do a sexy dance. Yeah. For much later in the evening or maybe a smaller group that you know intimately, there are also some that say like give a blow job, <laughs> which I think you should have time limits on those things. Yeah. So maybe like 20 seconds or 30 yeah. seconds or something brief. But then there's also one that says let's fuck. Yeah. Take a, <laughs> then there's take a shot. I mean, there's a, it's a really great idea. And I'm now it thinking, is. I think we have an old Jenga in in our closet yeah. that we should pull out. And let's just make that yeah. for you know, for when we have friends over. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, so it was... Uh, it was fun because we we got there and they you know the group was well into a game of Jenga, but they immediately there was one I'm gonna say leader. Guy. We'll say we'll call him <laughs> the ringleader. Yeah, he was the PT Barnum of the group, <laughs> and he was just like, "Hey guys, come join us!" And everybody kind of scoots over. Yeah, so and he we was like, "Okay, here's everybody's names," and he went around and he remembered knew everyone, everyone's names, yeah. and we introduced ourselves. And I was like, "Wow, that is no, so." Let me just say, I am horrific with names. I'm great mm-hmm. with faces, but I'm horrific with names. And if I've ever seen you at the club and went like, hey, you, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just so bad with names. Um, but one way to really turn me on is mm-hmm. to do something like that. Yeah. Like instantly I was fixated with this guy because I'm like, he remembers everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did. And and every time a new couple would come in or somebody would come up, he would again repeat everyone's yes. names. So, um, but I guess maybe if you if they were the first ones there and he built little by little. Well, that's but a, still that's impressive. That's though. true. You're actually right cuz it's like the game Simon. Yeah. You, you know, you go yeah. red blue, red blue yellow, red blue yellow red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like so as long as you keep repeating it, yeah, that's actually a good point. Maybe yeah. that's how he did it. Maybe. Um but yeah, so we just jumped right into the game of Jenga, and it was it actually was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And it was a good group of people. I would say overall similar personalities. A similar age group, similar yeah. personality. I'd say there was a, you know, we were probably one of the older couples there. Probably and about a 10 to 12 year age. Yeah, I would have said highest, a 15 gap. 15 yeah, from year oldest gap. to youngest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, fortunately, we uh, we look young, so <laughs> we we managed to infiltrate the group. Yes. <laughs> Day thirty nine. <laughs> they still don't know. I'm thirty nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I pulled uh, very quickly after we sat in the mm-hmm. circle. It was my turn to go, so I pulled a um, a, a jingo thing and, and what do you call them? Bricks. Pieces. Piece. It's gotta know. be anyway. Uh, I pulled one out and it was uh, a tile. it was strip. Like, mm-hmm. God damn it. <laughs> Thinking to myself, well, I'm glad I didn't give you my shirt. <laughs> um, so I stood up and did my, my sexiest uh, shirt or strip of my shirt. And I was wise in that the shirt that I wore had the snaps. Mm. So I could do the little dance and then pull at the bottom. And my shirt just was pop, 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 pop. And that tended to go well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. But then we, we went around and... Uh, at, at some point, as always, the, the tower fell and... So we rebuilt it and started again. And it was it was funny because there was a couple sitting to my left, and they were both very attractive. She didn't speak a lot, but she was also on the other side of him from right. me. He was next to me. And so I found out that he's in the building industry. <laughs> and so and he was watching the tower very intensely. <laughs> Which one to pull? Yeah. And it's one of the rounds that we were going around. I pulled out a piece and he's like, oh, that's the one I was going to get. I was like, yes, I could be a builder. <laughs> if I need a new career at some point. <laughs> I'm going to build Jenga towers. Yeah. I'm going to tear down Jenga. I'm going to tear down towers one corner at a time. Exactly. 
Um, um, but yeah, so that was, I mean, that was a blast. Really it enjoyable. Was. Um, it was a good icebreaker for especially that size group. Yeah, and, and you know, the people were completely embracing the game. There was a lot of laughter. Mm-hmm. You know, when it wasn't your turn, you were talking to the people around you. Yeah. It was a fantastic, that like right there was one of those moments. I'm like, this is why we come to this club. Yeah. You know, it was extremely social. It was, you know, a lot of laughter and just ease. The whole group was easy to be around. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so we, uh, uh, you know, people would fade off here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and a few more came in. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the couple that we had been, uh, you know, hoping to see that night, mm-hmm. they were, when we sat down, literally on the direct opposite of where we were. So yeah. you could not have gotten farther from us. <laughs> uh, but they slid over and we started talking and... Um, yeah, it was it was great to catch up with them again, mm-hmm. and um, I'm sort of forgetting. I know at one point the the PT Barnum guy. Yes, uh, he and his partner sat and chatted with us. So yeah. there were six of us were kind of talking for a bit. And he and I had so much in common. Yeah. Like it was one of those. Oh, I do this. Oh, I do that. Oh my, oh, oh my god. <laughs> and he kept calling you the American version of him. Yeah. So which, if you're out there, contact us because we actually did enjoy talking to you. Yeah, you were. Oh, <laughs> I may be having a bit of a crush. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, another <laughs> side note, folks. Another way to get me to crush on you is to say I'm the American version of you. I mean, especially if you're, you know, of any interest. Um, <laughs> interesting people. I want to be interesting. I know. I, know. <laughs> mm. I just realized I have not drank nearly enough today to have a podcast. Um, I'm too you're sober. on your first glass. I know. I know. I'm too sober to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and admittedly, this is where most of the night sort of gets fuzzy for me. So we sat in the front room talking to the P.T. Barnum guy and his partner and our friends that we were meeting there. The six of us sat chatting for quite a while while a good section of the rest of the group went into the next room, yeah, that big yeah, open yeah, room, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Twister had been pulled out. <laughs> and so th- there was a subset of people that were trying to do the Twister thing. And I know at one point I went to get a drink. Somewhere along the way, the P.T. Barnum guy and his partner left. Yeah, I don't recall if they... I think they joined in that group to some level, but I know I went to get a drink and, you know, there's like people all over how Twister ends up, you know, people all over and then somebody's like, oh no, I can't bend that way and whatever. And then they get this whole pile of people falling on the floor. That's hilarious. (laughs) Um, But everybody was having a good time and... Yeah. I mean, it was, it was an uproarious laughter. It was great. Um, Ends up being one of my favorite nights in recent past um, at... Mm-hmm. Uh, at OSS, it's in it's in the top five. And that that group as well. There was a I'm going to say a core section of it. They kind of moved together throughout the club. Yeah. You know, whenever it's, it's like they would sit and have a couple of drinks together, and then I know at one point they all went up to the big orgy room in the back and all played together. We were still with the friends we were meeting there, um, so we didn't join up in that. But there was a massive yeah. people up in the orgy room for that and. So- it's really nice when you get those groups that you know don't know each other going in, but you just click, and yeah. then you can just kind of cohesively those kind of th- become one for the evening. Yeah, those are some of the most fun nights where you, you're right. You you start social, and you're all drinking together, and it's it is very much this like we are part of the group kind of thing. Yeah. And you go because you go from one room to the next room to the next room, and so, sure people may peel away, but right. and then they'll rejoin, and it's it's this really great cohesion of kind of sexiness. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was that was that was cool to watch and yeah, yeah it's it's kind of funny um, because the whole time and I felt bad that we were taking the couple that we right. were going that we were hoping to meet um, sort of away from that group and we I don't think we were neither couple actually meant to do that it was just like we were so busy catching up and and socializing on each other yeah because we hadn't yeah. seen each other and and well, I'm gonna say ages but it hadn't been that long anyway um, so we sort of got left behind from the yeah. group. Um, so and admittedly, we're sorry. if it was, I was going to say, we are sorry, but admittedly, if it was important enough to either of us to stay with the group, then somebody would have spoken I up. I feel yeah. like we would have, yeah, so um, made that a point. So, yeah, so I know the four of us, we ended up looking around at different rooms because mm-hmm. at some point we we're like, hey, let's go play. Yeah. Um, so we looked at our different rooms and everywhere was packed. Mm-hmm. Um, so we ended up in the voyeur room. The little dungeon area. I do remember that. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because all the rooms were busy. So we, and that was the first time that when we were in the voyeur room that they had that little, I don't know what to call it, the horsey chair thing. Yeah. The, backward, the one where the guy sits in it backwards and sticks his, his penis through the little hole. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like 
You can be bound at your feet and your hands. Yes. And your neck. It, it reminds me of those horse chairs that you have when you're a kid that they're like wooden chairs, but they have the horse head on them. Yes. It reminds me of a grown up version of that. Because you can be bound and, you know, it has the dick hole. Most kids' things don't have the dick hole. <laughs> wow, there's a quote for the podcast. Most children's things don't have the dick hole. That is correct, ma'am. That is correct. So I don't know what this thing is actually called, but it's really kind of awesome. Um, I'm actually looking it up now. I'm Googling okay. it. But, yeah, we ended up in the voyeur room because they have not done a lot of, of bondage play at least from my understanding, they haven't done a lot of that and a lot of impact play. Yeah. And so she wanted to see a little bit of that with you. So we pulled out a few of the implements, started to do a little bit. Oh, I found it. Sorry. Um, it's a CBT chair, which... What does CBT stand for? Come on. People oh, at home are screaming. Through? Come back. I don't know. Cock ball torture. Oh, yeah. That would make sense. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can. I'm get not a, good at this name acronym thing. You can get it from uh, www.bdsm-gear.com slash cbtchair.html. That makes sense because you'd be tied. It's two hundred and thirty dollars. That makes sense because you'd be tied up your your wrists yeah. and ankles and yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, so that's what it is. All right, sorry. Please okay. continue. So that's that's what it is. CBT chair. Um, but yeah, so Mr. Adam was on the St. Andrew's cross, and I was using a few implements on him a little bit. We had really just kind of started, and her partner was sitting on the CBT chair, and she was kind of standing there with him, and it didn't take long for them to start making out. So then it was kind of like, well, if we're doing this for them to watch and they're not watching, then kind of what's the point? So we stopped, and we joined them, and we all just started making out. It's it's funny because my thoughts were completely different. My thoughts were, well, if they're going to do that, I want to be part of that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so we went over there, and you and her started kissing, um, but also she and I were kind of kissing on him as well because he was, you know, sitting in the chair. So I was behind him, kind of teasing down his ear and his neck from the back, and then she was on the front side. And I don't know, there was a lot of mouths and parts and everything. Yeah, it was hot. I just yeah. sat back and watched for a little while. I was like, yeah, this is this is like porn theater. It's great. <laughs> um, he seemed to be having a good time. I think he was having a fine time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so then we went upstairs, I guess. We the, were alerted that the small petite room yes, was open. It, it's just fantastic. <laughs> it, it, let me just tell you, make friends with people who work at the club because they'll pop their heads and they're like, Bye guys. hey guys, the uh, the petite room's open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Let's go. Call. It's ours. Um, so we barreled up there and... and yeah, took control of that room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we closed um, the door. We didn't leave it open. Yeah. Uh, so we did close the door because we wanted to play with just them at that point. And I'm trying to remember. This wasn't the first time that we had played no. a bit with them. No, because um, the first time, yeah, because the first time it was, you you were, uh, he was feeling a bit, I think, um, I'm cautious of me being bi. It's mm-hmm. one of the things he wasn't interested in because he was straight. Um, and and was was just kind of interesting conversation um and angela was like oh don't worry (laughs) he's he's not a predator (laughs) i'm not no no unless you want me to be i'm not anyway um i don't remember a lot of the specifics of play that night the first night or the last second night the second night the sexy in his shirt night. i don't remember a lot of it either we had we drank a lot of bourbon Oh, that's right, because I brought some of the special bourbon as well. You did that's bring special right. bourbon because they like their bourbon. They like their bourbon, and, and I respect were, anybody who likes bourbon. So and I, you were kind enough to share some of the good stuff. I brought the the top, top shelf. Yeah. Like, it's on such a high shelf that you can't even reach it. Um, and, he and hides yeah, it from the munchkins. I put it I put it in a, uh, a flask, and it was, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we passed that around. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we played with them, and it was... I'm, they're so easy to play with. They I like are. them a lot. Um, yeah. It's really fluid and it's easy and and he's <laughs> he's like this big tough guy, so he can swing yeah. you around and throw yeah. you down. And I just like I'm like oh I love watching people <laughs> toss you around like you're a little doll. It's great. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just so easy with them because it's while it is sexy, it's also comfortable and we can laugh and have fun and yeah. it's not you know it's not like oh we have to be super serious during the play kind of thing right. Which is fine sometimes, but... It's yeah. fine sometimes. Yeah. I'm, I'm rarely super serious yeah. about anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
bourbon. I'm very super serious about bourbon. Um, but yeah, and that's, you're right. It, it is one of those things that's really nice because you can go from, we're playing, now we're talking for a little while yeah. and we're playing again. And it gives yeah. you that really sexy ebb and flow of mm-hmm. kind of, of awesomeness. But it also brings you into their personality. And part of what we like when we're playing with people is their personality. Yeah. You know, we're not there just to fucking go home. You know, I don't, you're not just an object that I'm going to sleep with and then I want to go home. I actually want to know who you are and I like the personality behind you. Yeah. And so having that time to kind of chat or even just make jokes or whatever, you know, just gives you a little more insight into them and it, it creates more of that connection between the couples, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. And I really like that too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, I don't remember much else. I know we, we were there, we played, we left late, um, <laughs> Yeah, they were staying yeah. in the city. We were going home. Right. Um, good, good, good night. Um, great party. It was a great night there. Yeah. Yeah. I, that I makes still, me want to go back to another sexy in his shirt. I night. know, right? And so it was. And it's, <laughs> next it's time just, we'll have to do it. Yeah, it's yeah. like anything else. It's you have a good experience, and yeah. then you like, oh, let's let's do this again. Yeah. Let's do this again. Um, yeah. So speaking of good experiences, mm-hmm. uh, Friday night, this past Friday night, yes, was. The Pendulum Party! Yes. Part three. Um, it was our 3D version of the Pendulum Party. Mm-hmm. And by 3D, the D is for dicks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, so anybody who's a constant listener knows that I don't relax well. Right. I'm almost constantly stressed out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and so when I when 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 I'm at the pendulum party, I'm more concerned about making sure that everybody's having fun and and everything's going well than actually enjoying myself. Mm-hmm. This time was a bit different. <laughs> but before we get to that, uh-huh. we did um, one of our sex ed in the city classes. Oh, prior yes. to the pendulum. We did. Um, this was another time that just so happened that the pendulum party came on the same night as the last Friday of the month. So we ended up doing uh, the sex ed in the city on the same, our class on the mm-hmm. same night as pendulum. Um, and what did we do as a class? We did strap on sex and pegging. Which was apropos for pendulum. Yes. Um, and that. I, this probably was the class that I was most nervous about, mm-hmm. and I think you it's were probably, very nervous. Yeah, I think it's my favorite one. I think it went better <laughs> than any of our previous classes. Um, I think part of that is due to the number of people that were there. Yeah. I think we had seventeen, sixteen people there, mm-hmm. um, so it was a, a it little was more intimate because yeah. most of the time it's twenty to twenty-five people. Um, I'm going to suggest to the law that we try to trim back maybe the numbers. Keep it to twenty. Or yeah, so, yeah, keep it to twenty or so. Anyway, um, but we. It was great because it was totally conversational, and I think that's what I really loved about it. We, there was, you know, Miss Jeff did a lot of, of presentation kind of talking, mm-hmm. but the whole time you and I were up front as well, and it was very conversational. It was very, you know, she would talk about something and then talk to the talk to the people who were sitting in the room and ask mm-hmm. questions, and they would ask immediately ask questions about things, and it was really a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was great, and then we did our live demo. Yes. Um, which, you know, again, I was nervous about. I don't know why. I mean, I just have to sit there. Um, and it was, so we started the live demo with the pegging um, because we wanted to show a couple of positions, starter positions, you know, an easy way to kind of get into it. Um, and so we started with me laying on my back on like a double ottoman and then you sat down on top of me. Yes. And so that is an easy way for the penetrate to have control as to how quickly things are moving and and how it feels. Um, And then we kind of switched around to where you were bent over the ottoman and I was pegging you from behind. So you were a bit more in that sleeping child kind of pose. Yeah, and it was... Which uh, is an easy way to go in as well. It was really interesting. And we've done a pegging podcast in the past. It was like number three. We're planning another Mm -hmm. revisit of that, hopefully in the next month or so. But um, what still strikes me as funny about the class is I had assumed that I'd be able to carry on a conversation <laughs> while being pegged. Um, no. I had trouble putting words together in two sentences. Uh-huh. And the audience loved it. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, everybody knows me. I don't shut up right. ever. Um, well, we found a way to shut you up. And yeah, and a couple of people actually said that after <laughs> class. It's like, you know, we've never seen you quiet. Um, but you were having trouble putting words together. Uh-huh. Like, 
Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I was. Um, and admittedly, going into the demo, I was not sure how long you wanted it to go for. And so I, you know, I didn't know if this was going to be like, okay, in and out, just show a couple things, yeah. or if it was actually going to go on for a bit. Um, but it ended up only being a couple minutes. I would have said five to seven minutes. And then is you how were kind we of like, it. okay, enough, and pulled yeah. away. Yeah, I mean, it was so. good. It was good, but yeah. it's... You know, it is funny because it's difficult to, <coughs> it's difficult even just to be penetrated in front of a group mm. that size. Um, yeah, it's very confront, not confronting, but I mean, you're very vulnerable. Right. Um, and it's unlikely that you would have orgasmed at that point Yeah, but anyway, they're not going to so gain anything you're not, right. from it watching it for any longer than what we should. Yeah. Yeah. Because all you need is just a bit to show how it goes. Yeah. What to do kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so that was great. The class, I think, went kind of amazingly. It was fun. Um, it was good. And it was a good group of people at the class, too. Yeah, oh, my God. Interactive they, and... And of the 16, 17 people who were there, I think all, I think at least 10 of them stayed. Mm-hmm. Uh, or 10 or 11 uh, stayed, um, which was kind of awesome because they, they came for the class, they stayed for the party. Yeah. Um, and it was... Oh, my God. It was so much fun. Um, so, yeah, we... Uh, I, I changed into my neoprene mm-hmm. zippered top and then my my trunks that have the the neoprene trunks that have the giant uh, hole in the backside. <laughs> um, and yeah, we uh, we just started talking to people and, and I, uh, so much fun. And one of the things I think worked really well this time was in pre I feel like in previous uh, pendulum parties, you and I stuck together. We were, you know, yeah. the the consummate host and hostess kind of thing where we were always with each other and we Mm. would move around. And this time we split up almost immediately. Um, You were out. And I think that for me worked really well um, because this is going to shock some people. I can get shy in situations where I'm feeling like under a lot of pressure and stress, Mm -hmm. I can kind of shut down and then I rely on you to do the talking. And I think what happened was I was, you know, admittedly, I was going towards people that we knew either really well or at least passingly well um, and talking to them. And then we were bringing other people that I didn't know at all into circles. It was great. But you didn't have me to rely on. Exactly. So then you had to. I really had to step outside out. of yeah. my comfort zone and say, all right, I'm, I'm the pull out. That was... I just realized what I said. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I wish I had had a video of your expression. I mean, you looked like you were smelling toast and we're having a stroke over there. Like, like wait a minute. <laughs> Um, but it went so well. And, and, you know, a couple times I would look up to see where you were and you Mm -hmm. were over talking to somebody over there and oh, cool. And just the group of people that were there and we still don't have the numbers on how many folks were there. Um, but it was such, it was a, it was a big group. There was a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and everybody that I talked to was like, oh my God, this is such a great idea. We're having so much fun. And, you know, there was a few couples that, um, one couple that I talked to for a while, they had been to the first pendulum party mm-hmm. and then missed the second one and they were back at the third one. And, and he was like, this is the the best party. Um, no. and it's just so good to hear that. And we heard that, you know, you, you know, it, or I say you, we right. know it's a good idea. Um, and when a couple of people, you know, oftentimes they're our friends, um, will say things like, this is a great idea. This is what the, the community needs. It's great. But then when you start seeing people that either you don't really know them at all mm-hmm. um, or they and they don't listen to the podcast mm-hmm. and they just happen to see on the website, on Our Secret Spots website, that this party was coming up and they wanted to come to the party. Mm-hmm. Um, when these people start saying, this is a great idea, yeah. you know, uh, this is what the community needs, this is what the lifestyle needs, it's, oh, it was such a great feeling. That was said to us. Or said to me at least three times. I heard it a few times as well because I know there was a couple I was talking to and they've been to swingers clubs in a few different places around the world. And they and I got from my conversation with them, it sounded as if they were both bi. They were. And, they were both wearing purple because okay. uh, I so, was checking them both out. Yeah, they were very attractive. Oh, sploosh. Um, but you t- t- that there if I can speak. Yeah, see, they got your tongue tied. <laughs> uh, but talking to them, they were you know, commenting on how they thought it was a really good idea. They thought it was fun because you know, there isn't a place where guys can go and play but also have their partners there. You yeah. know, it's hard to find that acceptance you know, in where both can be there at the same time. Um, And so I heard from several people that, again, like you said, people that we didn't know, 
you know, didn't know anything about us or anything and just thought it was a good idea and came. And it's one thing to hear it from your friends. And, you know, yeah. we, we often tell our friends or we think that our friends are telling us stuff just to what we want to hear. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was so nice to have that sort of unprompted, like, yeah. this is a great idea. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it, it was, it, I was really, yeah. really proud of Friday night. Um, so, yeah, we, we talked to a number of people and then... You started getting antsy. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think. Well, there were a few females that I was interested in there, and uh, and we were all, or at least I was standing kind of near them, and we were chatting in a loose-ish group, people coming through and stuff, and coming and going, and I said something about, I feel like we should get the place started. And you, I think you heard it, and you were like, it's not even 10 o'clock yet. I it, was mean, like, it was like 9.40. It was... Ten till I think Which, it was really, close look, to ten. The party started <laughs> at eight thirty. Yeah, I mean, so it was an hour yeah. and fifteen minutes into the party, but I don't know. It just felt like people were still coming in, yeah. and like some of our friends that we had expected had like I'm not gonna say just got there, but they had gotten there about thirty minutes yeah. before. Yeah. But it just seemed like wow, we're already dressing down. Yeah. We're already starting the the play, um, and admittedly, <laughs> then I'm, I'm like all stressed. I'm like. Okay, but I need to stay down here and, and make yeah. sure everybody's happy and blah, 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 and ugh. Yes, but I, I made that comment, and one of the females that was standing near me, she was like, I think that's a good idea. And then another one was like, uh-huh, I think so too. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go dress down then, and because I had on a, a corset and pants. And so I was like, all right, I'll go dress down, and then, you know, we can go upstairs and play. So I went and dressed down and came back and it kind of gathered up a few people, and I think I might have had a drink in between. Well, because there was that moment where you came up to me and said, I think I'm going to dress down. We're going to go upstairs and play. And uh-huh. I went, it's not even 10 o'clock. And you went, what time is it? And by that point, you had gone okay. and, and okay. whatever. I think you had gotten a drink, and maybe you had dressed down. you just coming over to me to say, I'm going to go mm-hmm. upstairs and play. And I was like, it's not even 10 o'clock yet. And you were like, what time is it? I went, it's like 9.52. And you went, okay, I can wait eight more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at you. I was like, just go upstairs. <laughs> I did. I went upstairs and I took a few people with me. What was great was you didn't take a few people. You took a goddamn parade. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you went. You went. Okay, I'm gonna go upstairs to the big orgy room and I'm gonna play. And you left, and then both the ladies stood up and, like, little soldiers walked out right behind <laughs> you. And then another lady walks and was like, I'm going to go with her. And then one of the uh, – I was like, all right, fine. I'm going to go because, you know, look, four ladies just went upstairs. I am not going to miss this. <laughs> um, and then one of the other ladies' partners, he uh-huh. came behind me. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to dress down. I'll meet you upstairs. <laughs> like, and at this point, then it was like, tink, 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 tink. It's like people just falling into line. And it's like – it was. It reminded me of one of those parades that you see as a kid, and yeah. you're leading the the march. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. So yeah, we ended up eventually upstairs. Then with uh, there were four couples and a single came up a as single well. Female, yeah. mm-hmm. Single female came up, and um, so we started playing. I know I started. Well, did we? No, that's not, so. We went up and immediately went into the glory hall. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, so we revisited the mm-hmm. glory hole situation that we set up last time. The same three of us, mm-hmm. you, me, and uh, Mrs. Rogers. Mm-hmm. And so we, or Miss Rogers, not Mrs. Rogers, Miss Rogers. Mm-hmm. My sorry, I'm so sorry, my lady. Um, and so the three of us got in there, um, realized there was no light, so we went downstairs, got a Got a candle, came back up, uh-huh. realized there was no knee pads. Because let me tell you, we ain't young. So we went, <laughs> we went back downstairs, and I asked uh, some of the folks behind the bar, I was like, uh, can we have a couple of stacks of towels? And he goes, why? I went, um, we're kneeling on the hard floor. And he's sure, here, just take it. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Took a bunch of towels. Um, and then, yeah, then we just started the glory hole thing. That's true, we did. Um, I'm kind of bummed because I feel like it went a lot faster than last time. Like, the glory hole, the whole glory hole situation did not... Not go. At- yeah, last time I think people took it a little more seriously, yeah. and there were guys that were truly, truly interested in it. And this time, and maybe it was just the particular guys that were there. Were there? We had one patron to our glory hole session, 
Uh, we who, had two different guys. Right, but oh. the first one was was really interested, and, yeah. and so he came up, and and we you know did some magic with him, and then <laughs> <laughs> I got the magic in me. And then he left, and another one came up, yeah. but I think he was prompted more by everyone else. In yeah, the room. yeah, yeah. I don't think he would have done it on his own. So it's interesting too because. I'm also gonna say that the previous time that we were used, that we were in the glory hall, um, the, there's this there's this different thing. So either you you really enjoy the whole glory hall, the anim- anonymity of it, mm-hmm. or or you don't. And so there's first of all you have to look at that. So True. do you want to stick your junk through a hole and you not know what, who's on the other side? Right. I mean everybody knew it was one of the three of us. Um, and I sort of like the idea of it, it's two women and one guy. And, and you, you have don't to guess. really know. Yeah. And that's kind of fun. Yeah. And they, I know there was some joking about that. Um, but then the other side of it Every guy that was up there was very comfortable going down on another guy in front of everybody. So we didn't need the glory hole. So you hole. didn't need that yeah. anonymity. You didn't need that glory hole to sort of True. start the play. Um, and in in other situations, you might. Right. Um, and I underst- I completely understand that. That's a fair point. Um, and I think last time we sort of needed that. It was sort of an icebreaker. Mm-hmm. It's a it's the pool table, the spa, the glory hole. You know, <laughs> the, it, it's the naked Jenga or the sexy Jenga. Um, <laughs> You know, so you need that that sort of icebreaker, but this group didn't need it, and so we left the that's glory hall, point. and they all laughed and were like, "Finally, now let's start playing," yeah. kind of thing. And it was kind of this. That's how it was. Yeah. Um, so I went in to play with one of the females that I was talking with downstairs, and one of the other females as well joined in. So the two of us kind of ended up starting to kind of kiss on and play with her, and then she, of course, it kind of became a mass of. The three of us, I don't know. There it was, was writhing women. There it was, was amazing. There was kissing back and forth yeah. everywhere and it fingers was, and feeling. It was really and, hot. And yeah. so we, and another thing that is completely unlike us, normally we're, even if we're not playing with, with each other, we're mm-hmm. right next to each other. Yeah. You started out on the right-hand side of the bed, and I went completely to the uh, left-hand yeah. side of the bed, which ultimately was amazing. And also, a lot of times when we do start out play, you know, with another couple or a couple couples, is we'll start out maybe kissing each other yes. and then move out from there yeah. pretty quickly, but and still. But we didn't at we all. We really didn't do I just, that, no. I was interested in the females, and I just dove right in. Yeah. Like, I don't want to miss out. So. Um, and then <laughs> me and one of the fellas started making out a bit. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, so he and I are kissing, and then we laid down next to one of the other guys and his female partner. Um, mm-hmm. And... You know, it's so funny because you're all, you're trying to serendipitously, serendipitously, is that the word? Yeah. Serendipitously. Oh, well Ooh, done. That's a tough word. Um, spell it. Um, so we're trying to look at, sneakily look at armbands to see, you know, is it purple? Comfort levels. Is it yellow? What's yeah. your comfort level? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, um, the whole thing yeah. was awesome. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still not used to having... You know, that kind of group play, Mm -hmm. that big of a group play. I mean, because that was, I'm going to say, without a doubt, the first official, like, total orgy that we've ever done. You know, we've, because I have trouble calling an orgy an orgy when it's just partner swapping. Like, for me, an orgy is hands everywhere it doesn't sex doesn't matter it's just whatever's there is there and, and this people was, move back and forth yeah people yeah. are moving back and forth between sexes between partners right. and and this was you know 11 or i guess the 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 one single female she which a good friend of ours she said I was going to jump in and play, and I kept looking for a place to jump in and play. And then I realized, I'm actually really enjoying just watching. I'm going to watch. Yeah. <laughs> so there was 10 of us then that were moving back and forth seamlessly mm-hmm. um, between one another. and It was really kind of amazing. And I'll go back for a moment and touch on the point you were commenting on, that communication between comfort levels and play. And the first uh, female that I started playing with and kissing and... And I'm just going to say playing with. Uh, but the first one that I started with, the, the other girl who came in pretty quickly on that didn't know her. So I knew the other yeah. person. She didn't know her. And so she, when before she went to kiss her, she said, may I? Do you mind? Yeah. And so there was a brief, you know, it doesn't have to be a lengthy conversation. Right, exactly. But just a, hey, is it okay? Do you mind? And it was, of course, absolutely, you know, nobody, well, we and, all wanted it. So. And the same thing happened yeah. with me as well because the, the, the big dude um, kind of got up and started going down on his 
uh, female partner. Mm -hmm. And so she and I are both laying next to each other on our backs. And, and the one fellow's going down on me. And then, and then I looked at her and she had these beautiful, massive breasts. Yeah. Um, and I said, no, may I? And she was like, oh my God, please. (laughs) Which was like, great answer. Yeah. So, you know, I started nuzzling and suckling on her and then she and I were kissing. And then at some point we switched and, and I mean, it was like. I know that at one point I looked over and there were, I don't probably four guys. And it was like, you know, one was going down on another. Somebody was kissing yeah. somebody. There was somebody going down on someone else. And it was just this whole big, massive bodies. And then I looked where I was and there was, you know, four or five females. And we were all kind of a big mass as well. And it was just amazing. And that's what ended up, which, which I love is we sort of, I always think, you know, you, you put a bunch of things in a bowl and you sort of shake them and <laughs> sift them. And, and that's basically what happened was we sifted all the females yeah. to the right-hand side of the bed and all the males yeah. to the left-hand side of the bed. And so, and that's, and there was a little bit of intermingling because I know that one of the females, her partner came over at one point and I had my fingers in her stimulating her G spot and he came over and started stimulating her mm. clitoris. And so there was a little bit of that kind of back and forth, but it was overall it was, more yeah, male, th- female. There was a long period of yeah. time where it was a, a group of guys yeah. and a group of ladies and, and it was that's how it was. Mm. Um, but I think for me, it was, it was really nice because there was that fluidity and, you know, there was a little bit of back and forth with other people's partners as far as the opposite sex, but it's rare to get time like that with one female, multiple females for me. Yeah. And so I, again, like while I have this opportunity, I want to take it and I want to enjoy it. Well, and I, and I completely appreciate so, that. And it's the same way for me. Yeah. Like this was the first time that I had actually been with four other guys at once. Yeah. It's like, you know, you do a lot of, Need I remind you of Last Pendulum? No. This I'm, one was different, though. This one was different, yeah. though. Because Last Pendulum, that was great. But I'm going to be honest. Last Pendulum, I was more passive than I oh, was yeah. active. Yeah. Um, and, and, and this did know, feel more like an orgy situation. This one felt say. like an orgy yeah. situation, where the last one sort of didn't. It was just, mm. oh, we're just sort of playing. Mm. But this one was like, no, we, we're we here. <laughs> this is business. It was a, there We've was, got a goal that we were going to accomplish. It was a, a passionate group yeah, of people. It was, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, we were doing that wonderful ebb and flow yeah. of sex and conversation where we would all, like, you would hit the sexual peak and then you'd slowly come down and then we would, everybody would stop to take a few minutes to breathe and talk. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, someone would start it and they would just ebb back yeah. up. And it was this wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I know at one point, one of the ladies came back over to our side, <laughs> to the dark side, um, <laughs> and, and she was kneeling, kind of looking at this massive group of guys and I thought I'm not going to let this get away and I went you stay exactly where you are and she goes okay and then I kind of pointed down beneath her and pointed to my face I went may I and she went oh god yes <laughs> and so is she the one who I know there was one female that we've played with that couple once before at the club and she told you no, on, okay this, this is a different okay. couple, this is a different couple I'll get to that in a okay. second um, so yeah she was sitting on my face and someone was going down on me god I, I have no idea who <laughs> um, and you know I had at one point someone was going down on me she's sitting on my face and I had a cock in each hand yeah. <laughs> and I thought to myself ah, see 15 year old me <laughs> <laughs> You can have your cake and eat and stroke it too. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was awesome. And then there was again that ebb of conversation, mm-hmm. and then we all sort of talked for a bit. And then the and play there was started. A lot of, there were a lot of jokes as well, a lot of yeah. laughing, well, and that easy, comfortable laughter. So. And and that's because when I get, I, I, I won't lie, I'm nervous. Even through the the play like that, I'm still kind of nervous. I want to make sure everybody's having fun and, and right. enjoying it. Um, and my defense mechanism is humor. It's mm-hmm. always comedy. Um, and I will say the improv classes are really helping with that because <laughs> I find that people say things and I instantly just without there's no filter either, and, which is great. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, so it was good. It was a lot of laughter, yeah. a lot of lightheartedness. Um, but then what you were uh, hinting at. A couple that we had played with what feels like ages ago. It was months six, ago. eight months ago. Yeah. Um, and we haven't really seen him since. No, yeah. uh, we've we've talked to him a bit, or I've talked to him, uh, him a bit mm-hmm. via text, but nothing like it's just like, hey, how you going? Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, but she kind of grabs me, and if I had been wearing a shirt, I would have said she grabbed <laughs> me by the collar and pulled me up to her face, and then she just put her ear in my or her mouth in my ear and went. 
I remember you. And then immediately push me, or I remember you. Or I remember what you're good at. That's what that was that was it. I remember you and I remember what you're good at. Sorry, my, my brain is a little fuzzy, but it was I remember you. I remember what you're good at. And she basically grabbed my head and shoved it between her legs. And I thought to myself, <laughs> this is the greatest compliment I have ever gotten as an adult. You know, you start going <laughs> And I thought, yep, <laughs> I know where my talents lie, and most of my talents lie between your legs. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and that's anybody's legs, male or female. Uh, so it, that was, I, I, I was, I'm just going to live off that high for yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. We we were up there for quite a while with that group. Mm. And at some point. At some point, two other ladies came in, another couple yeah. of two ladies came in. Yep. Oh, you're um, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, And they, I mean, like, it was great because it was like... Well, I remember seeing them kind of hovering around the edge, and I could tell that one of them in particular wanted to jump in. Yeah. And I was like, hey, just come on, jump in. And she was like, and but she's more in the kink scene. And she's like, I'm just so used to the kink scene where you have to negotiate everything up front. Right. And I was like, just come in and ask permission before you do, you know, before you start touching somebody. And she's like, okay. So (laughs) she sat down next to me. And (laughs) again, it was one of those, I don't even remember what I was doing, but she sat down right next to me and and both of her nipples were pierced. Um, mm-hmm. Which now is one of my new big turn-ons. After you've gotten your nipples pierced, like pierced nipples, I'm like, oh my god, those are amazing. Um, and I went, oh, do you mind? She goes, actually, I can come if you do that. And I was like, okay. And so, <laughs> <laughs> like, literally a minute and fifteen seconds into teasing her mm-hmm. nip- nipples with my tongue, she orgasms and then grabs my forehead and pushes me off of her. And she went, I'm so sorry, but you can't do that anymore. <laughs> like, fair enough. Um, yeah, but then we ended up taking a break, mm-hmm. and, I, and the whole group... Because somebody, they, somebody I forget who it was, but one of them pulled out and said, I need some water, yeah. you know, because we're all getting thirsty. Oh my God, I mean, come on. Dehydration. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I all of us like, were like, that's a, a great idea. idea. Yeah. <laughs> so we all sort of migrated downstairs, yeah. and then we, sp- we broke off into smaller groups mm-hmm. uh, of twos, threes, and fours. And I went and talked to some folks that had been playing up the back stairs in those rooms up there. Yeah. Um, and th- it's funny because there were a number of people when I stopped to then look around that I did not see come in. I, I didn't remember them coming at all. And Which, I was again, like, oh, I felt, look, I felt hey, really more bad. people. <laughs> felt really bad about that. Um, but, yeah, we ended up all in the front yeah. room again. And then at some point someone was like, I think it was mm. that couple. No, what happened? So there was the couple... Um, there was one couple that split off that went back up to the orgy room yeah. because they got horny. Admittedly, I didn't see them go. Yeah. But someone had spilled a drink on me on the bottom half of my legs. And it was there was soda in there. It was a mixed drink. And so I was like, well, I don't want that to get all sticky, icky, and whatever when it dries. So I got up to go shower and, and just wash off the bottom of my legs. And I went down initially to use the... Yeah. the restroom at the bottom of the stairs but there was somebody in there so I was like well I'll go back up to the big showers in the orgy room you know be easy quick and when I got up there there was the one couple that had snuck off and and I came in to shower and they were just kind of lightly making out on the bed and so we started talking and everything and she was like yeah we got horny so we just decided to come back up well it's <laughs> funny because again we had split up you were sitting yeah. down and I was standing up with a, a group of a subset of the people we were mm-hmm. playing with plus a couple other people um, and at some point I looked around I was like where'd she go and so oh, she went up to the orgy room and I went of course she did and then but it really was just to wash yeah. off my legs well I turned around <laughs> to the group I was like hey guys I'm going back up to the orgy room to find my beautiful wife anybody who wants to join us is welcome and so I went up there and, and you were talking to yeah. the first couple and we all chatted for maybe three minutes and then you turn around and there's a mob of people <laughs> yeah hi guys we're, we're here to fuck again <laughs> <laughs> I was like this is great and uh, it was good because there was more of that that conversation and the laughter, the easy kind of introduction as everybody was coming in and yeah. finding places and kind of just figuring out naturally how you want to go about it this time. And I feel like there was a bit more of mixing things up again from how we played yep. the first time. Yep. So we, that There was, was a nice. little more male-female yeah. mix up this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it was great. You know, and it's... I, I, it was such a fun, yeah. fun experience. Um, I, you know, it's it's. And I will say that while we didn't see a lot of the people that were up on the other side of the club, up the back stairs, 
because we spent so much time in the orgy room. Um, I know that when I was talking to the folks down there, there had been, it sounded like a lot of play up there. And then when we were all done and we were kind of getting another drink down at the bar and just kind of standing in the hallway, you know, coming down from the high for a moment, uh, there was a couple that had been up the back stairs and she was all excited because she had found someone that she was really into to yeah. play with. And, and at some point he walked by and she's like, that's the one we played with. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. I love it. That's great. Yeah. yeah. It, and you know, I, I know at one point I walked downstairs to the bar to, to get a drink. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were three guys lined up at the voyeur room with their junk sticking through the, because, it, you know, it's bars. Oh, yeah. With a woman on the other side going between the three of them and a dude fucking her at the same time. Oh, that's amazing. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah. All right. That, that works. Um, and, you know, I know that two of the guys that were standing at the bar, they had their hands on each other mm-hmm. kind of, and I was like, this is kind of awesome. Yeah. Um, and again, there's, I see things like that and I'm just like, I'm so proud of this. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, even knowing that I'm not doing anything, but, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, so we ended up going back upstairs, wrapping up. I think everybody, yeah. I'm going to say, got their rocks off for lack of a better... Sounded like it to me. Yeah, yeah. for lack of a better term. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just... Everyone was pleasured. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and it was, yeah, we um, we cl- ended up closing down the, mm-hmm. the place yep. at one point. Every, people were leaving in, in fits and spurts, and uh, we asked the staff, we're like, all right, who, who all's left? And uh, Lawrence was like, uh, it's just you four. So like, okay, we can leave. All right, leave well, we'll put yeah. our pants on and go home. Yeah. Um, and that was 233? I think it was around 233, yeah. 235, somewhere yeah. around there. Um, excuse me. So we, um, yeah, we got all dressed up and Yeah, it was we, such a home. fun night. It oh, really God. was. God, it's... Because it it was there was that that chemistry between people, and again, kind of like the sexy in his shirt night, there was just that chemistry between people, the ease that people were willing to play and wanted to play, and it didn't feel like at least with the group that we were with at any point that anyone was uncertain or kind of pulling someone yeah. along the way, and like the 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 bisexuality amongst both the men and the women, yeah. I'm going to say was like confident yeah. bisexuality right. it was like the one fella had a, a curious mm. band on and he laughed at the end of the night and he looked at me and goes uh man what what color should i get next time i went up uh, purple you you are <laughs> not curious anymore that was i mean it was just it's great yeah. um and and for me and and maybe it's because i'm looking for it on on pendulum party nights i always feel like there's such is it's an electricity that's in the air yeah because you know because it's something different. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, on a normal night, it's great. You know, don't get me wrong. There's 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 a bit of a spark in the air. Right. But I think that you know, when you've got groups of people where everybody is a potential partner, yeah, there's that's a, the, the electricity spreads faster uh, and more evenly amongst the group. You know, it's interesting. Um, so normally, when you're looking at say a swingers club. And you do have more of that heteronormative lines that are defining things. And you look at a couple, there is that bit of, you know, I then would have to look at him and determine if I'm interested in him and look at her and determine if you're interested in her. And there is a bit of that, you know, then are they interested in us respectively? Right. Which is always really important, but then I feel like on these nights, it's more, I can look at the individual and say, am I interested in you, not necessarily you as a couple. So maybe yeah. if I'm attracted to one of you, but not necessarily both, I feel like it's a little easier to play. Yeah, I agree. Although I don't, I will say from my experience, we haven't encountered that situation, but you know, someone easily could. Because it is hard to get four people to all like each other. But in a situation like this, all it takes is a subset, two or three of you. It doesn't have to be everyone because, you know, I could go off with one of the partners, right. but not necessarily the other one. You know, and, and I'll say it's it's interesting because it's dip, very different for me in that, you know, being male, when I look at a couple, there's many times where I'm like, oh, I think she's really attractive. And I think he's really attractive. I need to play down his attraction so that I don't scare both of them off right. and then ruin it for you. Um, and so I would say, I would say that most of the time that we're at OS, any club, I should say, any club uh, that we're at, um, that I'm sort of playing down the sexuality side of it because I don't want to scare people off. Right. And I, I'm still, if anybody asks, I mean, it's clear that I'm 
you know, I, I'm very, I think it's clear I'm bi. I mm-hmm. think if you don't realize that I'm, I'm bi, that you're a little dense. But, you know, I'm still, you know, I, I'm playing down the sexuality side of it. You're I'm, not flaunting it in their faces. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm interested in you. Um, right. So, I don't know. It's it's kind of, it's a frustrating place to be in mm-hmm. because it's sort of like, oh, I want to be, a, I want to show that I'm attracted to another guy. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to ruin the experience for everyone. But then again, at the same time, if you don't show, and it doesn't have to be blatant attraction, but if you don't show right. some attraction, then it's not going to become more acceptable and easier for people to either, you know, because if I show that I'm interested in a girl, that's socially acceptable. Right, yeah. But how is it going to become socially acceptable for guys to do that if you don't little by little True. start doing it? True. You know? Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, final thoughts on uh, the pendulum party? I think it was it was heaps of fun for me. Yeah, and me too. I would say for us. And I know at one point towards the end of the evening when I came downstairs to get a drink, uh, Lawrence asked me, he's like, so are you having fun? I was like, yeah, I really am. And he was like, I saw some of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> Creeper. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, oh, you voyeur. But I didn't even see him up there whatsoever. So no. he must have just been coming to check things out and then go back down. I will but. say at one point, our second group, our second group play up there, I sort of st- stepped back, took a look around. Mm-hmm. There was 12 of us on the bed. There was a dude holding his girl. Um, like, they were standing yes, fucking. Yes, I saw that. Um, which I watched that for a little while because mm-hmm. I think I'm always impressed with that. Um, yeah. And then there was a, another lady on the floor going down on another guy. And then there was two people sitting on the bathtub making out and a single watching. So 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 people in that yeah. room, which now is the new record Ooh. For sex in that room. There we go. That At least seen. that we've seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. No, it um, was a lot of fun. It was a really good night. Yeah. Um, and I hope everyone there had just as much yeah, fun as I we hope did. So. Yeah. Um, if you were there and you had fun, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. Um, we always yeah. like to hear people's perse- perspectives and stories and yeah. And what stuck out for you? Like if you were there, what was your most memorable moment? Yeah, and because you know? w- really, if we get enough responses, we can go through and tell what people's most memorable uh, moments were. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting. That would kind of be awesome. It would be fun because then you get yeah. to see what's important to different people. And also, if there was something you didn't like, and yeah. you're like, oh, I wish they had done this instead, or I wish it was like this instead, we would love to hear that as well because this, you know, we we've, we've gotten it from straight from the law's mouth. We're gonna get to do it again um we are pretty sure we're going to be able to do it again this year mm-hmm. um we just yeah it's it was so I mean, it was so much fun yeah it was great uh oh we, one more thing we didn't talk about what the oysters <gasps> so yes. real quick real quick um this was the first party Mm-hmm. Which, I, again, I mean, it just might have been random that it happened, but I'm going to say it was me. No. Uh, <laughs> Conceded that, much? Uh, yes. <laughs> this is all about us. Um, this was the first party at OSS in which there was food available to order. Yes. And so that food came uh, from the Owl House. And mm-hmm. if you know us, you know that we're regulars at the Owl House. Um, but we had a half dozen oysters. I know people were getting falafels. I mean, it's... And there was, yeah, there was... Um, Salt and pepper squid, I think yep. they were. Some of the bread. The bread, bread is plate. amazing. Yes. Um, yeah, they have, all, basically it was a lot of their starters that were available if you wanted a, a light meal or a snack. And I think in particular this night, it was a little more helpful because we had the class and yes. then you, straight into the party. And so you have people that are staying from one to the other and it's, you know, a little more awkward to leave, go get food, come back. Whereas... You know, in this case, we had the food from Owl House that they just delivered because it's yeah. two doors down, basically next door. And they just delivered it right over. And and at OSS, they have those little high-top tables so you can go and eat a little bit there quickly and then kind of get on with the evening. So it was super convenient, and their food is amazing. I know we got six oysters. I had two. I, I don't know how many you I had. I had three, and I gave one away. Okay. I thought I saw you giving some away, so I, I was like, I had two. I don't know what happened to the other I four. gave one away. Um... <laughs> But they're just so good. So my, my only criticism and comment for future is that we also need to have breath mints. Um, because they I, have some down at the bar area. Yeah, but they're like, they're taffies, and I'm terrified of losing fillings. Okay. Um, but, well, so. We'll just bring our own breath mints. Well, and that's what I did this yeah. time, because I, I, I knew that I was going to, you know, just in case, I'm with breath mints, mm-hmm. because nobody wants to be kissing on nobody who had been eating oysters. Fair enough. That ain't sexy. Fair enough. 
That ain't sexy. So have your breath mints ready. So have your breath mints ready. Fr- be fresh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it was a... It was great. Mm-hmm. I, I loved having the food. And it was, again, as the conversation started, ooh, what it are you is, eating? Yeah. And then it's a lot of food sharing, which is like, not only do we share and swap partners, we share and swap food, which is like, <laughs> this is why I love this community. Yeah. And I get all excited. Um, yeah. So that was Pendulum Part 3. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. Um, yeah. So send us your opinions, both positive and negative, please, about the Pendulum Party if you were there. Um you can find us on the interwebs, www.bythebye.com.au. Um, we are also on Twitter, at By the Podcast, on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash By the Podcast. Um, and you can email us, uh, theatomsoflove at gmail.com. And yeah, uh, smoke signals, um, grinder. You can find us all over the place. <laughs> RHP. Um, yeah. Ooh, yeah, we are on RHP. Uh, yes, we, are we are the atoms of love. So there you go. You can find us there. You can find us there. Exactly. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much uh, for everybody who was at the Pendulum Party. Um, God, thank you guys. Yeah. It was it was fantastic. Definitely. I'm really excited. Um, and we'll catch you next time.